What's up, everybody? Welcome to Epic Battle Cry. It is Friday, otherwise known as Doomsday, on this particular edition of EBC. I am Daniel Kaiser, joined by Tony Grice and Brett Adams, and we are here to kick off your weekend in style with a question from Surreal Tricks, which sounds like a really surreal cereal that might also be tasty. Um, if you're high. That .com domain. <laughs> <laughs> Should look into that. But anyway, the question from Surreal Tricks is <laughs> this. Since Doom 4 is yet another, all caps, reboot of Doom, how can id Software keep recycling the same content, and how does this affect the industry? Pretty easily, um, apparently. Yeah. A, a very uh, interesting question and something obviously pertaining to a franchise that uh, has been around a long time and, you know, credited in a lot of ways for establishing Beyond Wolfenstein. I was going to uh, say you, falsely, falsely credited <laughs> with establishing first person shooters. But exactly. So anyway, Brent, you seem to have an opinion on this topic from Surreal Tricks. What do are I? your thoughts? Um, the reason that they can do it is because people keep buying it. That's true. I mean, that's the short yeah. answer. It's called capitalism. That's exactly right. The short answer is that uh, if there is demand for a product, somebody will create yep. the product. And that's going to do it demand. for this Friday edition of EBC. It was a short you... one for once. No, so, what, so, yeah, okay. So, so they that's do it how. People keep buying it, but yes. why do they keep doing it? The, the reason they keep doing it is is because they they obviously like it. They, they, they like Doom. They like the idea. You know, we, we, had, a, we had a question uh, earlier in the week about remastered editions and you know, obviously, Doom has been through this. Uh, you know, with you know, like Doom Three, and and I don't, I don't know the particulars of Doom Four. I, I haven't really followed it, but anyway, the point That's being the that new one, I well, that part I understood. Yeah. But uh, the remastered, uh, the whole remastered craze is, uh, in my opinion, it, it's it's really based on nostalgia and uh, just the idea of kind of giving people a new variant on something that that they really like and. I mean that that's a that's a very valid thing that there's plenty of games that I've bought for nostalgia appeal. You know, some of them have been better than others, but anyway. Yeah. So I think that uh, I think how they can keep doing it is is that people obviously enjoy it and, and, and keep buying them. At least they have up till now. We'll see if that continues. As far as how it's affecting the industry, um, I think that there's you know there, there's a danger I suppose of the game industry kind of turning into like where Hollywood is right now, where it seems like. You know, every year, like the big things that come out are either remakes of old movies, or it's a film adaptation of a TV series, or, or yeah. you know, something like that. And, and you know, people talk about, or you know, you know, comic book movies. Obviously, you know, comic book movies are huge right now, derivative of comic book mythos. And uh, and, and I, I fucking love comic book movies, uh, you know, particularly the stuff that Marvel's been doing. Um, but I, you know, it's it's a fair criticism to say that oh, you know, maybe it's 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 a little bit self derivative and. It's not very original. There's no new ideas, that kind of thing. Sure. I, I think that there's a danger of the game industry kind of getting to that point uh, somewhere down the line, but I don't feel like we're, we're there yet. As a matter of fact, I kind of feel like it's actually been a relatively positive thing in the sense that it has enabled people to kind of look back at what was great about gaming from yesteryear and to and to bring some of that sensibility into the modern era. We've talked about this on the show before about retro gaming being really big right now and people making modern games but based on old school 2D game design, 2D platformers or, you know, RPGs, things like that. And yeah. so I, I think that that's been I think that's been a healthy thing. Or at least as me as a consumer, I have enjoyed buying those things. I have enjoyed seeing those kinds of games in the marketplace and and playing them. So um that's that's kind of my uh, my feeling on the industry is I I feel like it's just it's diversified the industry to yeah. uh, to a large degree which I think has been a good thing. TJ, yeah, uh, to a certain degree, like I, I think your your first point is just the fact that people are they're they're going to buy these games. They're yeah. you know if they weren't buying these games they wouldn't continue to make them. Although I do think you know you really Doom is a series that frankly has been spread over so long a period of time. Yeah. That realistically, yeah. what was the you first know, one? Ninety like three or something like that. I mean, it's been yeah it's yeah been well and and twenty years Doom at this three. Point? <laughs> exactly. Doom 3 was, what, like seven or eight years ago at this point? So right. in in a roundabout way, like even though they are kind of rebooting the franchise, you couldn't really look at Doom 3 and compare it to, like, say, the first Doom in right. any real way. I mean, they're, they're, the games are so vastly... There's been whole franchises that have come out and had multiple sequels in the spans between it, those games. Exactly. Right. And to be frank, I don't think Doom 3 did nearly as well... As, as a lot of people kind of hoped for. Like, at the time, it was really meant to be this 
huge release, and I don't think that it ever quite matched the the numbers that they were sort of hoping for, and uh, which kind of leads me down the path that I'm not really sure that the, I'll be interested to see how this this new Doom does. Like right. if if it comes out and and really just hits, you know, I don't know. There's there's some sort of feel that you kind of need if you're trying to like reboot a franchise where you have to simultaneously embrace and and get right everything that was good about the franchise exactly. right. but yeah. then do yeah. something new enough well, the, the only problem is i'm not really sure that it's, doom it's a has one. well and i really don't know that doom like the thing about doom was it was kind of this this experience i mean it was the experience of playing it for the first time it was it was so different i, I mean taking taking wolfenstein out of there it was huge. it was di- exa- and it was so and it was so impressive compared to everything else around oh, it oh yeah but the concept behind it really was pretty basic, you yeah, know, pretty singular military guy against army of, of you know, uh, demons. Demon I mean, monsters. that you know, there wasn't a lot there. So that to me is has been part of the problem with Doom is that it is almost shallow. Too, it's very shallow. It's it's pretty shallow from a concept. So I don't really know that that Doom Four is going to be anything more than just a prettier, you know, maybe with more weapons and more, you know. But, but, there, but I mean, there I don't are really plenty know. Plenty of first person shooter experiences that are shallow that are very very popular. Exactly. Well, That's exactly. True. So I mean, it's not to so say they they can't win out, but this, real quick, this genre can support can support that. I think. I, I think so. Although I do sort of question whether. I mean, I, I sometimes feel like people are just. Sometimes I feel like people are buying the same game over and over. Like you look at like a Call of Duty, they're buying the same game over and over. You look at like Madden. Well, you are buying the same game over and over. Hey, EA on that even point. has a system for that. EA Access. Oh right. Well, but you're theoretically maybe not buying some of the games that you originally have. I know, I'm just joking. The, uh, but anyway, so the whole thing is how does this affect the industry? I mean, you know, this, like you said, it's, you know, people are, people are still buying these games as long as they continue to buy these games. They're going to continue to do sure. stuff like this. I do think that it does sort of push them in a direction of, okay, we, we really have to do something. We, we, have to do, we have to do this right. So, like, if, it's, if it's, we make it just like the original games, but just, you know, better looking, whatever, and that's all they do. Maybe that's what they have to do. I do think it is a little hard to sort of hit that nail on the head. You look at something like, um, you know, the, the Duke Nukem game that was in, in development hell for 10 years, 10 plus years or whatever. You know, it, it came out and it kind of hit a little bit of a nostalgic point for some people, but it died off pretty quick. Mm-hmm. You look at something like a, a Serious Sam, like a game that literally is just about the action um, and it sort of it has you know it has some popularity I think for the budget they put into it it ended up being profitable for for him I'm sure but it what wasn't about, like this big huge release yeah what about to like, me, like Wolfenstein like Wolfenstein seems to have done yeah. okay I mean certainly yeah but but it doesn't feel like a although, triple A title although that's, to that's me. not been true of every you know. Tr- Right, of every kind of modern yeah. reinvention of Wolfenstein. Uh, the, just the last little thing about this is this will be the first Doom not under the direct control of John Carmack, right? Mm-hmm. And I do think that that like the thing with Carmack is he are, always has had like these great game engines that sort of pushed yes. the, the game along, and really they had something. Whether it be like the lighting, like I remember the lighting in Doom Three was yes. damned intense. It was it was impressive. I don't necessarily I, I, once they've lost that sort of piece of it i really don't know if there is a lot of magic to be you know squeezed out of right. out of the doom franchise at this point so i, yeah. I don't know dk what, what do you think i well, mean you sort and, and and that's what i was basically basically going to touch on like there's there's you know franchises that we kind of associate with a variety of things whether they're storytelling or their action or their experience doom to me and the reason why and to answer this question how can it keep recycling the same content It's because Doom, you know, to me, is a franchise that is associated with technological advancement. There's very few franchises that have that kind of moniker. Uh, You know, I think of Crisis. Uh, You know, it's something that is like, we're going to... It's bundled with like a new engine at the same time. Exactly. We're going to show you what we're capable of. Doom has always kind of had that. I mean, there, you know, we all know Wolfenstein, kind of the, you know, first official type of first person shooter, and and Doom actually, um, you know, was the first big one, you know, built upon it because of its. Tech, uh, technological prowess and so every iteration of doom before you know especially with Carmack on board before he left Bethesda and id software to you know um, steal all of their technology and give it to Facebook but um, no, I'm that's, sure. a, that's a mighty that's a mighty big accusation yeah, and, and it's been levied by yeah. people, I'm pretty yeah. sure. it's been levied by Zenimax. but anyway the the bottom line and is good that luck doom, with that lawsuit by the way fellas yeah good luck yeah. with that but doom is always been associated with kind of technological advancement so when a new iteration of doom comes out it's not just like 
okay, what's the plot? What's the story? It's like, right. what am I going to experience that is new for PC hardware? Specifically, that is the question. So, uh, th- you know, for a lot of people, that is tied to the Doom franchise. I don't it's think... It's kind of odd, too, because if you think about it, there's really only, like, Doom 1 and 2 were based off basically the same engine. Yeah. And so, really, 3 was the only one that really did that. You know what I mean? But, yeah, but people do have that thought process. And I don't really, uh, you know, it's like you can't talk about re- re- recycling the same content. Right. This is only the fourth one. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's the definitely one, but- series that have gone on for way longer than this doing the same thing over and over, essentially. So, I don't well, know. Well, I, I mean, know. and the other kind of sub-question, how does this affect the industry? I mean, I think the industry obviously does suffer from sequelitis, but at the same time, if if you build it and they come and it, they want more, then give it to them. I mean, well, and more to the yeah. point, if sequelitis gives us, you know, like games like Uncharted Two, then exactly, or Batman Arkham City, or you know, well, or, or even if it just gives us, like you're talking about with the game engine, if they if if Doom Four brings some really cool new technology that right. maybe it doesn't fully realize, you know, realize, but like another game does, yeah. you know, as long as it's pushing things forward and it and gives you an enjoyable experience while doing so, yes. that's all that really matters, and, right? And, and Doom you know. kind of tends to be that. I mean, there are games that come along that like are known for their technological advancements of the industry. I mean, I remember... I mean, Crisis was that way. Crisis like, was that nobody way. Nobody really but talked even, about the game Crisis as much as how good it looked. I, yeah. I remember was, getting, uh, as a Christmas gift, uh, Splinter Cell, the original yeah. Splinter Cell on the Sweet. Xbox, and the lighting engine on it was phenomenal. I mean, yeah, Splinter yeah. Cell, I mean, everybody you, talked you remember, about that. You remember crawling down that tunnel like what had the fan... And the light yes. behind it, that like one end, or like, like standing know. behind a fence yeah. and having like the fences. It was, you yes. know, it was, it was, yeah. uh, it was one of those and, moments where you're like, wow. And and games I think are those awesome. things are so impactful that not for anything, but like that level of impact has allowed the Splinter Cell franchise to <laughs> survive yeah, all the way to true. this day. Because even though there's been hits and misses, there's there's been some great games and some games that are mediocre, and there's been some you know, things they've tried, but um, when you can make a technological advancement or show something that is going to be pioneering within the realm of interactive entertainment, then you are sustaining your franchise. And I think that's what Doom has done. So, you know, they're going to be around. Doom is going to be relevant as long as they keep pushing those boundaries. But I do agree with you that since Carmack is no longer at the helm, I'm interested to see what happens. So... You know, yeah. it then could spell doom for the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you know, sometimes new blood, sometimes innovation and so forth can be a really healthy, uh, a really healthy kind of uh, kind of thing. Injection. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So anyway, Surreal Tricks uh, and your brother slash sister Dominatrix, we hope that <laughs> you enjoyed that and we hope that that answered your question. And if you have questions that you want to submit to us, feel free to do so on Twitter at Epic Battle Axe. That's going to do it for our Friday edition of EBC. We hope you have a kick-ass weekend and join us again on Monday for Tony Grice and Brent Adams. I am Daniel Kaiser, wishing everyone a happy not-holiday weekend. So cry havoc and let your voice be heard. Happy Friday. Peace.